Hello, Dramas and Other Creatures, and now for something reasonably different. Um, symbols, gear, stuff. I, li I like gear. Anyway, so I've got this ride here. It's a 19, I think late 70s, possibly early 80s, Zildjian 20-inch ride. I've looked at the stamp and tried to compare. There's all sorts of websites where they show you different stamps and the ages, and I can't tell really with any reliable sense, you know, what stamp this co looks like or whatever. Uh, I remember when I bought it, I was told it was like a late 70s symbol, I believe. Um, and back in the day, I, I remember actually the day that I went to buy this symbol, I went to Drum Shack in Battersea in South London, uh, that's in England, and um, I had a bunch of symbols, I like a 20 inch Ride. I was looking for something I could use for, you know, sort of just general, whatever, what was I playing at the time, you know, rock, sometimes a bit heavy, uh, but, you know, rock, blues, that kind of stuff, funk maybe. And so I wanted something which had a nice stick definition, a good bell, that was important to me, and uh, just something that sounded better. At, I can't remember what would have been my main ride at the time, but I think it might have been like a, a, a Sabian something or other. Oh, it's not very informative, is it? But anyway, I was looking for a ride. And I remember going to Drum Shack, um, and they have a space there with a drum kit in it, and I, I was able to, to grab a bunch of cymbals that seemed like they might meet my needs and desires, and I sat there with four or five cymbals on various stands, and I played, and, and this one jumped out at me, and I thought, I like, I like this cymbal. I remember particularly liking the bell, which is kind of nice and clean and bright sounding. And whatever it was, the, the comparison at the time, I just liked this ride a lot. And uh, over the years, um, I've sort of grown to not like it so much. And maybe that's to do with the fact that the things that I'm playing have changed quite a bit. I'm tending to play uh, a lot more lightly in my old age, I guess. Um, I've been spending a lot of time doing swing playing, and this symbol feels a little bit heavy for that. Um, and I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm spending a lot more time in small spaces uh, over the years. I've been spending more and more time teaching, so my kit's been in a small room with my ears hovering over the symbol like this, and so stuff uh, starts to pop out and, and you start to question whether you like a, a particular symbol or drum or whatever. And uh, it was uh, pointed out in, in a video I made recently by a, a commenter. Uh, it might have been on my channel or on, on another channel, Andy's channel, I, I made a video with him. And, um, but somebody pointed out about how, you know, we, we, we can tend to sort of sit and overthink things. I'm very conscious of this. Um, I'm sitting here on top of this ride symbol and I'm being very analytical. I have too much of the, the, the luxury of thinking about this symbol. And, and when I play this symbol, I don't know, something, something I don't like about it. And so I put the symbol on eBay, but nobody offered me uh, the sum of money that I wanted for it. Maybe I was a bit too ambitious, but it seemed like if I wasn't going to get enough to get another symbol, it didn't seem worth selling, so I, I took it off the market. And it's been sitting there, and I wasn't sure what to do with it, but I'm slightly bothered having this thing here not, not being played and enjoyed and not finding a new home. And I recently had the thought, Maybe I could get the symbol modified and then if you follow drum related things whether you're looking at this or that social media There's lots of YouTube videos. There are a growing number of symbol smiths people who are whose expertise is making and, and doing stuff to symbols um, there, There's lots of them around and uh, for instance on um, Instagram you can see um, lots of interesting channels uh, as I said, YouTube, there are lots of interesting channels of people making symbols. And so I'm aware of a fellow by the name of Dave Collingwood, who's a, a, a well-known English symbol maker, symbol smith. And I looked at his website and discovered that you could send the symbol in and he can do something to it. He can change and hopefully improve it. So uh, I got in touch with Dave and he said for 90 quid, he can lathe the bottom of the symbol. I tried to describe a little bit what it was I wasn't happy with. It's a bit heavy. Um, the, the crash sound is a bit dense for me. And uh, he said for 90 quid, he can, he can do something about it. He can help the symbol breathe by lathing the bottom. Great, 90 quid to get a craftsperson 
to modify my symbol, that's reasonable. I, I, that sounds good to me. So I'm going to send this symbol off and uh, let Dave have at it and, and do whatever he thinks um, it, it would improve the sound of this symbol. And, uh, you know, since I, I made contact with Dave, um, I, I, I was thinking, you know, can I find a way to describe the things about this symbol that, that I like and I don't like, what I want to improve about it? And uh, I've been playing the symbol, and <laughs> I really don't know. I don't really have the language to adequately explain to myself. And the more I play it, also the less confident I feel about my own ability to uh, assess what this thing is doing and whether I like it or not. And, and that's really interesting to me, the, the, the idea of you know, how our perception is this maybe unreliable thing. And again, bringing it back to the point that maybe me sitting in this room with my drum kit is giving me too much of an opportunity to over-reflect or over-analyze the nature of this symbol. And uh, it's a topic that I'm very interested in. Am I, you know, am I in, in trying to um, really think about and really know in depth what this symbol is about or any other symbol? Why do I like one symbol and not another? Uh, is that really a bit self-indulgent, shall we say? Uh, and that's a good question. Now, obviously, it, it dawned on me that this was a bit of an opportunity to make a video, maybe share something uh, interesting with other people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record myself experimenting, or I don't know, improvising, making some noise with this symbol now. And um, I'm going to then uh, take you through the process of getting the symbol modified and we'll bring it back in and then have another listen and see if there's any, any way to measure any qualitative difference that's, that's made to the symbol. I hope that makes sense. I, I hope this is, has at least some potential interest for someone there. I'm certainly curious about it. Now, as I said, the more I've been playing this symbol, the more I've been asking myself, well, what is it I don't like about it? Actually, I, I do like something about it. So first of all, what do I like? I like the stick definition, right? So let's, and that's really, you know, the sound of the tip of the stick um, meeting the symbol. I really like the bell. It's metally, obviously, and it has a pingy clanginess that I like about it. The thing that, that I, I don't like very much is the sound of sort of the crash option of this cymbal. Um, just a, a light sort of brutal crash. It's a bit heavy, it's a bit too much for the, the kind of things I might want to do with it. Uh, if you play this kind of, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, a jazz crash, where you, you sort of let the shoulder of the stick smack the bow of the cymbal, so you get quite a bit of contact between the wood and the metal. Again, there's a bit too much sound happening there, and uh, I'm, I'm fixating on, on Dave's uh, word, breathing, letting the cymbal breathe. It feels a little bit like the, the thing is constrained. It's, it, it, wants to, it wants to breathe a little bit. And so, with, with a certain, you know, the more, the more I focus on the cymbal, I think, well, you know, is there, is there any problem with this object? I don't know, but... Let, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to play the thing, because I'm rambling a little bit, aren't I? But I'm going to play this cymbal uh, and do the, just a bit of maybe uh, some regular eighth note playing, a little bit of uh, bluesy shuffle sort of thing, whatever, some 12-8, maybe a little bit of swing, just uh, a few different styles. And then um, I'm going to send the cymbal off to Dave 
uh, and then I will oh, I'll finish off this video. Uh, I'll show you the process uh, that we went through to modify the symbol. In other words, Dave will be doing the modifying, but he's going to communicate with me during the process uh, about the modification so that I'll be able to give feedback as we go. And, uh, let, you know, let's see what happens anyway. Enough talk. I'm going to just demonstrate this symbol a little bit now. This is not going to be a very scientific comparison, is it? That was a bit random. But, okay, there you go. There's my possibly late 70s, early 80s, I'm not sure, Zildjian 20-inch ride that's a little bit on the heavy side. It's a little bit constrained. It might want to breathe. The next part of this video, hopefully you'll be introduced to a bit of the process of how this symbol gets modified and in due course uh, it'll come back to me from Bristol and um, let's see if we can detect a difference, improvement, I don't know, is there any meaningfulness to the sound of a cymbal without a band? Let's see.